Hey, we got another video here. It's Meet the Makers, only on Block.News. I'm your host, Jonesy, and I'm very, very lucky to be talking to Matt Ballard, who's the CEO and founder of Out of the Cloud. Matt, thanks for joining me this morning. Hey, thank you for having me. Pleasure. Pleasure is ours. I think our viewers are going to really love to sort of get familiar uh, with your company, Out of the Cloud. So can you just sort of tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the reason this system was developed is um, I started a career as a law enforcement officer back in the 90s. And I very quickly started a private detective agency after that. And none of the uh, file sharing services like Dropbox or Hightail, or which used to be you send it, was serving our needs as investigators. And um, so we wanted to create a system where we could instantaneously send our work products to our clients. Um, as a result, we developed something strictly for the use with my company, which is, was Ballard Investigations Incorporated. Um, and I had no intention of selling it. But a lot of our clients are also private detective agencies, and they were demanding, like, you know, listen, can you resell this as a service? It's fantastic. We can't get this anywhere else. Um, so I was a little reluctant to do that at first. And then because the demand was so great and there's nothing else like it, um, we expanded it to from my case viewer, which is what it originally was called, to outofthecloud.com. And we already have a working product. It's been working for the last five years. So unlike a lot of ICOs, um, we already have a working platform. You can sign up for a free trial today. There's no credit card required. You can actually use this thing and fall in love with it like anybody else has that's tried it. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit of company history. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to to go on too far. <laughs> no, I like that. I like the details. So it is a it's it's a it's an alternate to your typical cloud-based storage. Yeah, in fact, the the objective is not to go into the cloud at all. Uh, one oh. of the issues we was with security concerns. You know, people uh, store things and all their stuff in the cloud. It's vulnerability to all kinds of hackings. Or, for example, when AWS had a sector shutdown, 180,000 websites went down overnight. Um, and that was a huge concern for people that are sharing sensitive information. Like in my business, as a private detective, we did a lot of video surveillance. There was a lot of uh, background reports, um, you know, case-sensitive materials that if they were hacked or got into the wrong hands, it could be a nightmare for us. So we wanted to create a way that would avoid all of that type of vulnerability. So the system we created was extremely unique. It's a, it's a web-based presentation platform. That's another thing like Hightail and uh, Dropbox, they don't focus on presentation at all. So they kind of have this thing where you, you choose the files you want to share with somebody. Um, they have to download them one at a time before they can even see them. It goes through this whole process of invasive permissions and, and requiring downloads on the receiver's end, which takes time and costs money. Um, so our system is instantaneous. There's no downloads required. Uh, there's no invasive permissions. There's no software to install. You simply, if you have access to the Internet, you log into the website, you select the files you want to present, and we package it into a web-based secured presentation. So as soon as somebody clicks on that link, the videos are ready to play. You don't have to download anything. The, re the, the reports are instantly there. You can scroll through them. Uh, pictures, audio files ready to play. Everything is instantaneous, and the receiver doesn't have to download each thing before they can see it. Now, they, there is download sections available, so if they want to keep a hard copy of it, they, they can do that. <clears throat> so it's um, focus, more of a focus on instant delivery and presentation with, with a whole lot of security in mind. Yeah, yeah, because I, I was going to ask you about that and why um, a service like Dropbox wouldn't be able to be utilized as a private investigator. And now, you know, you kind of answered that question with the sensitive video materials and that kind of stuff. So it sounds to me like from a personal standpoint, your story is you came from that place. You saw a need for some sort of secure, um, you know, data transfer, data availability service, and you're, you're providing that which is really, really cool. Can we geek out a little bit on it and tell us tell us kind of how this works? Like, how did you set this up? Well, how is it so secure? And how do you how do you take it away from a cloud? What are we dealing with here? It's kind of cool. Well, so let me give you the, the basic concept. I'm, I am not the technical guy, but I'll give you the, the way that I understand it to work. Sure. Uh, basically, all the videos go into a separate set of servers in thousands of pieces. And the, the right. reports and documents go into a whole different set and the same kind of thing. And these things go out there, and our system puts them back together on the other side. 
so that even if somebody were to hack into a server of some kind, they get the most they get is a piece of something and not have any use for it. You know, there's no way they, they can't put all that back together. What we're looking to do with the blockchain is a totally unique concept, and uh, I was just working this out with, with my tech team. Actually, last night we were finalizing what we want to do, and uh, I'll give you a rough idea. Um, to use our coin as a utility, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the old medieval times when a king wanted to send a message or something like that. He would write it out on a piece of paper, he'd fold that over, he'd pour wax on it, and then he'd use his ring to make a seal. Uh, yes, and that yes. Was to, to, make, to make it tamper resistant. We want to utilize our coin as that tamper resistant seal. So for people that are using our system that'll be 100% decentralized through the blockchain, when they send a coin to somebody, that's kind of like putting a stamp and a seal on it, and they send it through the blockchain. Well, with those transaction details, we'll include a link to the presentation they intend to create, and it'll be password protected. So it's it'll go through a bunch of levels of encryption. Um, on the receiver's end, they'll have the link, they'll have the transaction details, and all of the files that you intended to share. So if you wanted to send 10 movies, or you know, 10 movies plus three documents and 15 pictures and a bunch of audio files, when you send that one coin to somebody, you're also sending with it the link that was created using our existing platform. And that keeps it out of the email. Right now what people are doing is they'll create a link using our platform, and then they take that link and they email it to any number of people they want to see mm -hmm. that material. Um, but as you know, email has vulnerabilities. Oh. Emails, Yahoo, uh, you know, you, even Microsoft-type emails, they all get hacked pretty commonly, especially with a lot of the international fishers and things like that. So. This is a way of avoiding even going through the email process in order to get that accomplished. And, and it's, it's a new concept. So um, right now we're having the blockchain developers try to determine whether or not that's even feasible. But we're kind of that's what we're looking at in the near future. That's pretty cool. Uh, in, in addition to like private investigators and law enforcement, that kind of thing, what other what other sort of sectors do you kind of envision using using this high secure file transfer file storage system oh, absolutely anything um youtubers for example right now they use youtube as, as videos and uh they try to get millions of likes and, and subs and that kind of thing uh this is a way of, of doing an entire presentation so as, as in addition to your video for example you might have schematics of uh whatever it is you're talking about it is a document that somebody can scroll through while you're talking on your video and uh, audio files, whatever. Uh, school, you know, education department, if you wanted to teach a class, for example, on any subject, regardless of what it is, all of your educational materials for that specific subject would be in a simple link that you could send to 5,000 classmates or uh, whatever the case may be, and they have instant access to that subject matter with all of your materials in it. You don't have to and, you know, keep printing all these books and things like that. You can scan them one time, and then they're there forever. Um, one of the, you know, that was that was a big need. The banking industry was another one. Yeah, sure. Uh, they have very strict policies and procedures that they're able to share data through. And and currently, a lot of the things that they were using were cloud-based. And, and there's just I've heard so many horror stories from cloud-based computing uh, mm -hmm. that that turned me off early on. So before I even knew what the blockchain was, we were looking for an alternative method of, of getting these things accomplished. Yeah, I mean, and uh, you know, we've dealt in the political realm with sort of hacking and emails being out there. I mean, you can imagine a, a more secure system for some. Although I don't know, maybe maybe we really want to know what some of these politicians are doing. You know, it was kind of that was kind of enlightening. Be like, transparency yeah. yeah, a little transparency would be kind of nice for that. But I I, I like this that you're offering this. Uh, uh, are are there other services similar to you? Are you are you the first one that's sort of going this non cloud based um, storage situation? I've never heard of it before. Well, we're we're the only ones I know that are focusing on instant delivery and presentation. Right. Like okay. I said, a lot of the other ones like. Uh, Dropbox, for example, you know, one interesting thing about Dropbox is uh, in, in 2014, they had a $10 billion valuation. Yeah. And that company has never made a profit to this day. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the founders have admitted that they don't think they'll ever be profitable. But what they do have is 500 million users, yeah. daily users. So the trick is kind of like Facebook had no value. It was It's a free thing. You, you know, for the general consumers, 
98% of those customers are free users. We have a free service as well. But one of the difference between us and Dropbox is we found a way to monetize that service, even on the free level. And what we we're doing is because we have all of these branding features like the, the top banners and the um, watermarks on the videos and uh, clickable links with, with all kind of things, plus the document sections and all that, we utilize that space on the free user accounts uh, that would be premium features for people who pay. We're using that for ad space. So once we get to a point where we have 100 million users or, or whatever the case may be, then we can offset our, our out-of-pocket cost for providing that free service by selling, at, you know, approved ads. Obviously, we don't mm -hmm. want, you know, pornography or something like that going out to sure. a Catholic church. Or, you know, yeah, right. Case so, I don't know. Some of the Catholics might like that. <laughs> yeah, they might. And for your own personal pornographic storage, this is a perfect solution. <laughs> Not that I have any of that. Just saying. Hey, so, uh, Matt, where do you see – where do you sort of see uh, – the future of this storage going, um, I think this is the beginning of it here. Um, you see us moving away from these services like Dropbox because of security reasons, because of the, the companies struggling to make a profit in that space. Um, where do you kind of see it going three to five years from now? Can you can you give us sort of a, a, a glimpse into what your vision is? Absolutely. You see, what I wanted to do is focus on the personal touch. You know, instead of like sending you a, a boring link you have to download it and wait forever and if it buffers you gotta start all over and things that's what dropbox is doing now and i think one of the, the mistakes that dropbox has done is that they have built upon an ancient platform they had a great idea you know back in 2004 whenever it was that, that they came up with it and they built off that existing platform instead of thinking ahead 10 to 20 years and using utilizing what's new or what's going to be coming forward and that's one of the things like, for example, when we send a presentation out or somebody creates a link on our system, uh, there's a welcome message up there. You know, it, like, uh, you, you know, your name is Jones. It might say, welcome, Mr. Jones, to your secured um, presentation. And all those things are personalized towards the recipients. So there's all those kind of personal touches that make it just that much more professional, I think. It was, we, we have custom templates. We made it to where it's designed to mimic your company website if you have one um, so you can choose your color schemes your top banners all your branding features that's that's where we're at today i think in, in the future in the next three to five years i really like the concept of sending not just your transaction details with your coin but including that information with that blockchain transaction as well that the public can access without mm -hmm. the password but they may see a link it's encrypted they can't click on it they can't access it but that password makes all the difference. So I, that's one of the things I see as being a prominent possibility with blockchain that's not being done yet. And you think moving away from cloud storage in general is probably a positive thing anyways, right? And, and that's something that we could see being eliminated. And, you know, can you see it kind of going away in five years? I think so. I, well, maybe not completely. But what, what's happened with cloud storage is people have traded security for convenience, you know, and they sign away every right they have when they install these programs into their computer. Nobody ever reads that stuff. But if you actually read all the evasive permissions that a Dropbox contract requires, for example, anything that goes onto that computer, they're automatically backing up or whatever. And I mean, you're supposed to be able to select who you choose to see what. But the deal is that third party sees everything. So and you have yeah. control over that. So one thing about us is you're not you're not downloading all your junk, you know you're only selecting what you want at the time you want somebody to see it, and it only leaves your device to go straight to that person or those people, mm -hmm. but it never goes up into the cloud. And right now what's happening is it's kind of bouncing in and out. It's up there on a on a auto delete timer, so it's kind of like Snapchat. I it see. bounces in, goes straight to your person, and then it automatically deletes within a given period of time, and that's the way the system is currently operating. But, um, it, you know, I, I would just say it's a free trial. Sign up, use it, tell me if you don't love it. If you're using Dropbox or Hightail already, there's nothing like out of the cloud.com currently in the market. Yeah, I, We take a lot of feedback, and that's what's gotten it to where it is right now. Yeah, I mean, I use Dropbox uh, quite frequently and Google Drive as well, um, but I'm always open for a uh, new storage. And, and the security that that uh, 
out of the cloud seems to offer is really enticing. I think that's something that you know that you guys are doing. Re that's really really necessary these days, because I mean, our data is just this hacking and all of this stuff. You don't know what, who's going to see this stuff. You know, um, and and in a way, don't like I wanted to ask you. Maybe I don't know if you know this, but this if you if I'm uh, uploading some videos to Dropbox, don't in a way they own that stuff now as well. On some level, I never read the fine print, but don't they kind of, sure. on some level, own that? How does that work? Well, you, you've given it to them. Given it so to them. So once you've given it to them, you no longer have the rights over it. Now, I mean, they're gonna share it with the person or people you want it shared with. But the, you know, if anything that you give give them, they own. Pictures of you, your family. A hundred percent. Hundred percent, sure. And and they can utilize those things for their own purposes too. There's no, you, you no longer own those. Now I don't want to make any claim against Dropbox or any other specific company. The only thing I can say is the difference with us is there are no zero invasive permissions required. There's no fine print. You don't have to install anything or download anything. You just go to the website and utilize the service. There's yeah. no contract. You know, it's just one of those, um, like, like you said in the beginning, we were trying to provide uh, an answer to a problem we had in a specific industry. Mm -hmm. And then because of the demand and because people were using it for personal reasons, like uh, and my grandmother's 90th birthday, we have a very big family. And so we had videotaped that birthday celebration, uh, you know, the grandkids singing and that kind of thing. So there was a lot of different videos involved in uh, personal things, uh, you know, those audio files of the music. And, and so we used um, our platform so that we could send a link to all the family members. And to give you an idea of how far I go back in the PI industry, is when I first started, we were using VHS tapes, wow. the big yeah. shoulder boomers. And, yeah. you know, going back to that, it's technology has made huge leaps and bounds to where, you know, I watched um, VHS tapes turn into fossils and uh, CDs and everything's digital now. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing with digital is to keep it safe, keep it simple. But again, the, I think the biggest difference between us and things like Dropbox is the instantaneous presentation of it. I see. Um, there's no presentation with Dropbox right now. Like you're using it. Somebody, if you send something to somebody, you're sending them a link and they have to click on it and they download one thing at a time. Yep. There's no package. You know, with the links with us, it's all, uh, it's just like opening up a website with all those materials. In fact, that's kind of what it does. If you want to simplify it, it's a website creator. But these web links are not indexed, so they can't be searched for. Um, and they're encrypted and password protected, so only the people who are intended to see those materials can actually have access to them. This is great. I really like it. Um, and uh, for, for yourself personally, uh, what kind of motivates you to, to offer this service? I know you gave an example about your family and stuff and that you kind of come from the... Is it because you came from the securities division and you saw a, you know, a need for something like this? That's what started it, sure. Yeah, sure. I grew up on, on a five-acre horse farm in a little town called Ocala, Florida. And, uh, oh, all right. You know, so I was just in a middle-class family growing up, and then um, being able to solve an industry problem is just kind of exciting because it's we're, we're doing something that's never been done before in a way that's so simple it's stupid, but the way that we put the tech together is pretty impressive, and, and my tech guys would have to walk you through all that because that's sure. not me. All I did was I recognized the industry problem, and then I hired people smarter than me to do what I wanted it to have done. And I said, I want to do this, 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 and this. And he said, yeah, we can do that. And, and uh, Robert Keddy was uh, very instrumental in that process. Uh, he's the company president and, and really the tech leader when it comes to how the system operates and that kind of thing. I like it. I'm going to join myself. Um, and those of you who are uh, watching, if you want to check it out, it's outofthecloud.io, correct, Matt? That's that is. Um, sorry, you still there? Yep. All right. Yeah. No, that is the uh, website for our um, ICO. Okay. The website, if you want to sign up and use the product, is is out of the cloud .com. Out of the so cloud. The cloud .io to invest in or you know, read the white paper, or whatever, and then the .com if you want to actually go use the service. Uh, do you guys have an app as well? We do. Um, the, the apps that are in Google and um, the Android stores or, or uh, Apple, sorry, are there, but they're they're called pre-launch apps. They basically sure. are just there to keep us engaged with our community and to lay out breaking news. And when people sign up or 
utilize those apps, they qualify for uh, to get one of the limited free premium accounts. So some of our accounts, to give you an idea, that there's the free version, which everybody gets, no matter what. You sign up for a free trial, and you don't keep the premium features. You you downgrade to a free account. Uh, but then they start from $15 a, a month, and for the big enterprise levels, I mean, they go up to 495 a month. But um, so when you download those apps, you, you may get worked up in the line to where you can get one of those free premium accounts that we're going to be giving away in December. Amazing. That's great. Um, so uh, for those of you who are curious uh, and want to step up your cloud, your uh, storage game, rather, uh, I think this is the, the next sort of wave of, of what we're going to be doing and getting out of the cloud, being more secure with your data, which is really important, as you've uh, given many examples as to why. And I'm sure in our personal lives, we can think of instances where security comes into play. So, uh, oh, did I lose you? Well, Check out more videos from Block.News where we'll be uh, speaking to the most, you know, sort of inventive minds in the area of uh, blockchain and crypto. You there, Matt? Oh, there you are, back. I was just kind of wrapping it up, saying uh, thanks for joining us. Those of you watching at home, go to Block.News for more videos like this one here with, uh, with Matt, and I appreciate your time, Matt. Have a wonderful weekend, buddy. You too. Thank you very much.